Hey, what's up guys? Mark Conley here, founder of Daily Soccer Skills. And today I'm actually, I'm gonna get a little bit vulnerable. I'm gonna share with you uh, my story, some of the highs and some of the lows that kind of got me to you know go from being a soccer player to running a website about um, soccer skills. Um, so just like just like many of you guys, just like every you know a lot of players in America, I got my start playing rec, and I was definitely the kid picking clovers the first year, and then you know slowly but surely I started to figure it out. Made all star teams, all star teams go competitive, and, and next thing you know, um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm having to travel into the uh, the District of Columbia. I grew up in Virginia, so I was having to travel into D.C. to uh, you know play on different teams and you know travel all over the East Coast for tournaments, ODP. Um, stuff like that. So it was, you know, it was a really, it was a really fast kind of like moving experience where I went from literally in like you know some rec league to like playing some pretty high levels within you know four or five years. So I had into um, I had into high school, and you know anyone that's ever played high school knows it's a little bit of a different game. It's kind of biggest, fastest, strongest sometimes win. You know who can throw the ball in the furthest, who can flick it on, who can run and gun kind of deal. And um, I wouldn't really call it like a ton of soccer being played, but um, so it took me a little bit of a while to kind of make that transition from like the more controlled possession-based club game that I was used to playing to a little bit more of the hit and run style. So um, you know what started out is like kind of me maybe not being one of the strongest players when I was playing um, um, varsity as a sophomore. Um, you know, I ended up graduating as you know the school's all-time leading goal scorer and then holding the um, uh, single season record for like the most goals or like you know like whatever. Um, so, that, but I mean, this is like 20 years ago. I mean, no one really cares anymore. I don't. Um, anyway, my point being is that, you know, through, you know, traveling around for ODP, through the high school accolades, like, you know, the all-state, all-region, all all-district, whatever, you start to attract some colleges, you know, going to, you know, college showcases with your travel team, you start to attract some attention. So, I was recruited by Division, you know, one, two, three, and um, NAIA schools, so I had offers across the board. The caveat for me, personally, was, you know, finances were, were always a thing in my family. I, and I don't know if I really realized it at the time. I mean, there was definitely, you know, there's, I mean, twice a week, you know, we had grilled cheese and uh, um, um, uh, ramen noodle soup. <laughs> and that was kind of like, you know, like, I was like, I used to look forward to that back in the day. Um, and so, you know, but it, it, like in hindsight, it's like I kind of I kind of see what was going on. But at the time, like we were living large, um, you know, always went camp and had a little, you know, one week vacation a year. So, you know, we, you know, really, ha really happy of those kind of humble beginnings. Um, so anyways, the reason I share that with you is that um, staying in state was a big, big thing for me. So I had to find um, in my in my state, which was Virginia, I had to find a college that would you know, kind of check all those boxes for me. And so um, there was a Division II school at the time that um, I wasn't recruited to, but it was in the same conference as a school, as like 10 other schools that like I was recruited to. So I'm like, okay, if I'm good enough for all these places, I'm good enough for this place that's like right there in the middle. I know a few of the guys that are going down there and playing and, you know, I'm on the level, if not a little above where they are, I'm going to be just fine. So sure enough, that summer I um, I head off to, uh, to work a, a camp job up in the Northeast and I actually set up a little gig where I was training with a local pro team, a little semi-pro um, team in Rhode Island, and um, you know, twice a week I train in with them and do my own stuff on the side to kind of stay fit and stay in shape. And so I go and do um, um, walk-on tryouts, like just full of confidence, like literally, like you know, the, the coach at the um, of the pro team was like, "Hey, come on back in four years, you know, let's see how you develop. We're interested in you." and had all the success in, in high school and, and, and in club and being recruited and I'm like, you know, I thought I was kind of something special <laughs> and, um, you know, but that's, I mean, that's good and that's just naive, but whatever. So I get to, I get there and, you know, I kind of show up and blow up at tryouts and do well, score some goals, have some assists and, you know, the coach is like, all right guys, thanks for coming. We'll be giving you a call if you made the team. So I head back to my dorm room and like literally, like I was like, I was totally like the kid, like waiting by the phone for like someone to call. You know, like, like it's just, like, I, like I'd walk out to use the bathroom, I'd come back and, like, just see if there was a message, or, you know, or I wouldn't leave it. It was, it was really pathetic <laughs> in retrospect, but I look back on it and laugh, but at the time, it kind of hurt. <laughs> so, anyways, as you can guess, that phone call never came. And so the next day, I cruise in the coach's office, and I'm like, well, you know, what's up? I mean, like, are we not, are we not seeing the same thing? I thought I had a pretty good show, and he goes, oh, no, you did. You were great. He goes, but I've got, like, six forwards, and... I just, I don't have any use for you right now. I was just like, whoa, okay, you know, so it's like, 
I just kind of, I kind of got phased out before I even started. So, um, and he had a lot of juniors and seniors forward stacked up, and that's I mean that's that's his decision. It is what it is. Um, so I was kind of down about that, and then about a uh, about a week later, I get a call from my mom. Her and my dad are separating. I'm like, what in the heck is going? Like you know, so it's like first I'm not a good soccer player. Now the cracks in my foundation or uh, my family foundation are kind of starting to show. So I'm kind of bummed there. And I'm not making this up. I can verify it all. So what happens next is I get a call from my ex or from my now ex girlfriend, but at the time girlfriend, uh, who was going to school about two hours away. It's like, hey, it's just it, it's probably not gonna work out, you know. I mean, like we're in college now, like like total like like out of the movie. Can like hear like the party going on in the background, like the music, and like here I am like feeling so sorry for myself in my dorm room in my college. And um, and I remember just hanging it up, I hanging up the phone, just being like, like my head in my hand, like, like oh my God, like I didn't make the team. Like I, my family's in pieces and the love of my life just walked out on me. Like, it, like literally if you played it like backwards, like I lost my daughter or something, like it would be like a total country, like Western best hit. <laughs> So I laugh about it now, but at the time it was kind of hard and I was kind of down on myself for a couple of days, maybe a week or two. <laughs> but um, I'm really proud of how I reacted in, in that regard because I, I made a decision one night. And I just said, you know what, this could happen to me or this could happen for me. And I said, in one year, I'm going to be on this team. Not only am I going to be on that team, I'm going to be one of the best players on that team. I'm going to be starting. I knew I could do it. And so what I committed to was every morning I was up like everybody's still asleep Saturday morning on campus everyone's sleeping 7 a.m. I'm out running you know three four five miles doing some sprints running stairs whatever it is I was putting in the work on top of that I'd be out on the um, I knew what time the team practiced and so my class schedule worked out so I could go out there and get some time on the field and train while um, before they got out there and so I would always you know I did that kind of strategically so that like you know the coach would kind of like see me a little bit um, so I was like, you know, kind of like, like making it be known, like I wasn't going away type of deal. So what ends up happening is the team has a, a decent year, and then that um, spring I end up getting invited out to uh, to train with them in the spring season. So out there, we're training, you know, there's guys from other colleges that have transferred in, there's, um, you know, players like with around campus that wanted to get on the squad that are out there, and so it was one of those deals where like, you know, like what happened to that? kid Johnny that was training with us I, I he hasn't been here for a week or so and it was just like kind of like, you know kids kind of got let go over the course of the year and so we get to the end of the spring and it's like mid-April and so by this point I hadn't been offered anything so I'm like you know what I'm gonna um I'm gonna hit up some of these other schools I'm gonna go go train with them because I'm playing next year um but I've got to be given the chance to at least get on the field and so uh, a really special thing happened to me. And like, you know, one weekend I went away for like a visit at a uh, different, uh, another school to meet with the coach and train with the team. And the captain of the team actually went to the coach of my, um, the college where I was at and said, hey, listen, if you don't want this guy, like, like that's fine. But like, you know, you're missing out. And if you don't do something, like he's out, like he's literally going to be gone. And um, so that Monday I showed up at training and my coach was like, hey, we want you on the squad for next year. So cool enough, you know, go get on the squad, and then, you know, I was obviously, I, I was happy, that was like step one, and step two was like, now I had to kind of like make my mark, and so I, um, you know, kind of like that summer, you know, worked really hard, put in the effort, and I showed up, and I definitely, you know, I wasn't the starter at first, but slowly but surely, I started being the guy that, you know, got the assist, that won us the game, that, you know, got us the goal, that, you know, got us into our first conference championship game, and it kind of went from a player who wasn't a part of the program to like, you know, now like, okay, this is one of our go-to guys. Um, and so we actually ended up like that first year, we ended up winning the, um, the conference championship. And, you know, I ended up making the, um, the all tournament team, which was, you know, kind of a, a big honor for somebody who wasn't even in the equation a year before. Um, so I was pretty proud of myself in that regard. Um, and then, you know, the course of the next three year, uh, four years, um, you know, I just, I stayed after it, you know, and, and I, I, that, you know, became a starter, like more consistent, and kind of became the face of the program. Like you know, the guy you saw on the website, the guy in the media guides, the you know, the dude that like you know when recruits came to campus, like you know, coach wants to introduce you to and stuff like that. And so that was you know that for me. I mean, that, that wasn't like that big of a deal. Like you know, like my ego. All right, I had an ego back then, but you know now it's kind of like you know you just, you just grow up and you grow out of those egos. But my um, 
At least you hope you do. But my, uh, my point being is that I went from a guy who wasn't even part of the equation to now I'm getting a scholarship on the face of the program and the school's gone from Division Two to Division One, And, you know, like me and a few of the other guys were kind of like the guys that were kind of like leading that charge through. So it, you know, makes me feel like really proud. But at the same time, um, it was the lessons that I learned in those moments where it would have been so easy just to throw in the towel and be like, all right, you're not good enough. Everything's falling apart and just choosing an easier way. And so um, I was proud that like I, I stuck to my guns. I, I sorted it out. And it's not always, you know, sunshine and Skittles, as they say. I mean, you know, sometimes like you have to, you have to dig in a little bit and find some grit. And in that moment, I knew I had what it took. And so um, in the DSS 15DA program, a lot of the skills and exercises that I give you guys are things that I use in that year training to make sure that I was fit and that I was ready to, you know, to have that kind of success. And so, um, you know, the question's always like, you know, how bad do you want it? You know, are you willing to go there? And, um, you know, in that, in, that, in that time in my life, like I had that grit, I tied my, I hung my hat on it and I, I dug all in. And I got exactly what I wanted and what I deserved. And so, you know, I want that for you guys if that's what you want. All right, guys, thanks for listening to my story. It's, uh, it has a happy ending, um, but it wasn't always a happy situation. But it made me who I am, and I'm pretty happy about that. So, all right, guys, get out there and train. Use that for motivation.